Morning, everyone. We've got, we've got a few more people connecting here in a second. Maybe we'll just uh, wait a, just a few seconds so people can all click that join button. Um, my name uh, is uh, Professor Jesse Heilman. I'm an assistant professor here uh, in the physics department. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit today uh, about our program and uh, what we do here uh, at Carleton Physics. We've got a bunch of uh, new people coming in. Maybe I'll just wait a second to see if uh, we kind of equalize on uh, the number of people here. Okay, well, I mean, let's just not wait too long. So, uh, as I said, my name is Professor Jesse Heilman. I'm a, a professor here at the department. Um, and uh, our, our department here at Carleton um, uh, is uh, one of the, uh, uh, not only a high level of, uh, of educational focus in terms of our teaching of physics, but also uh, one of the premier uh, research uh, faculties uh, in Canada. We're involved in uh, a lot of different groundbreaking uh, physics uh, uh, experiments and, and theory, uh, including things uh, like uh, finding out what dark matter might be, exploring the edges of our uh, basic knowledge of subatomic physics through the Large Hadron Collider, um, precision modeling of uh, patient tissues for medical applications, uh, imaging, things such as this, as well as uh, some deep theoretical uh, understandings of uh, the basic part of our uh, nature as well. Um, we have uh, uh, two main focuses in our, our research areas here at Carleton in the physics department, uh, as I just mentioned, particle physics and medical physics. Uh, the particle physics typically gets split into theoretical and experimental, and there are a couple different groups in the in the experimental area of particle physics, and then uh, medical physics, where we have uh, specialists in uh, imaging uh, therapy and biophotonics, which is this uh, a very interesting uh, new uh, space of using nonlinear optics in short in time to attempt to uh, make diagnoses and imaging of, of tissues and such like this. Uh, it's very a very uh, new and breaking. Uh, uh, exploration of, uh, of physics. But uh, part of what you do when you come to uh, Carleton for your bachelor's degree is you kind of want to think, well, what am I going to uh, do uh, with this degree? I, I like to say that part of it is that you're just a, a part of you is here to explore and uh, learn more about the basic nature of the world, about what's happening around you to appreciate and understand the, the beauty of uh, everything that's going on in the world around you. But um, after that, uh, there are uh, lots of different paths that our graduates take. A lot of them end up in uh, various kinds of industry in um, technology fields, uh, data science, such things like this, uh, communications uh, companies here around Ottawa, uh, defense contractors uh, all over the world, things such as this. And a lot of our graduates also end up in uh, various parts of uh, the government, uh, either the National Research Council, space agencies, any, many of the regulatory commissions that uh, Canada runs in order to have uh, input from physicists, uh, uh, nuclear safety, environment, natural resources, all of these things have uh, space for physics graduates to uh, contribute in. And that's largely because getting a degree in physics is more than just about having some knowledge of equations or um, you know, particular phenomena or something like this. What our goal is for your degree in physics is to help teach you a different way to think about the world around you. We want to teach you a set of critical analysis skills that let you break down complex problems into the most simple ones, understand those simple problems, and then rebuild complex solutions. This is what we do in physics. We take the complicated natural world, we break it down into understandable chunks, and then use those chunks to rebuild understanding of complex systems. And that is a skill that is uh, applicable uh, across the board. You're going to find place, uh, places where that skill can be used uh, in almost everywhere you look uh, after your degree. Uh, of course, uh, space has been, been a place where physicists have had a, a, a place uh, for a very long time, ever since we've been exploring space and putting satellites into orbit and such things like that. Um, and then also a fair amount of physicists end up going into the medical field uh, to become medical doctors, where once again, this uh, critical analysis uh, skills uh, and understanding of the uh, basic world of how our tissues and bodies are constructed uh, gives you a very good skill uh, for becoming a medical practitioner. Big, big part of physics that a lot of students end up in is uh, in research labs. So things like uh, uh, Triumph, uh, the Canada's National Accelerator Laboratory over in Vancouver, Snow Lab here in Sudbury, uh, Fermi Lab in the US, Jefferson Labs, uh, Power Generations, 
uh, all these kinds of, uh, of research and technology fields uh, are open to graduates with physics degrees. But also there are places to go that uh, are not necessarily just focused on basic science, but instead on communicating that science, whether it be through uh, journalism, science journalism, or uh, uh, instruction and teaching, either at a, a secondary level uh, or at a university level if you uh, decide to pursue graduate degrees uh, in physics. Um, all of these things uh, are, are something that you can do. Uh, in addition, uh, many physicists end up in the finance sector as well because all of the uh, computational and mathematical modeling that you have to do in order to uh, pro progress in physics are very useful tools to be used uh, in finance as well. So let's talk a little bit about uh, our particular program. So say you want to come to Carleton uh, for a degree in physics. Uh, what, is, what is that actually going to look like? Well, we have uh, several different streams and programs available in our department. Um, we have the Honors Bachelor of Science degree, which is separated into several specialization streams, which we'll kind of all talk about here. Um, we have the Majors program, which is less specialized and provides a more general uh, view of physics. Um, and then uh, in the engineering faculty, um, we have a partnership with them uh, for an engineering physics program where uh, those uh, students in the engineering faculty actually take a fair amount of physics more than any other uh, engineering uh, specialization. Um, and so end up in some of the more advanced upper year physics courses as well as uh, advanced engineering courses. And then there's always the option of a minor in physics if you're interested but don't want to devote the entirety of your education to understanding uh, uh, physics. So. Let's uh, spend a little time going through uh, each of these options uh, right now. So um, applied physics is the specialization you would choose if you're wanting to transition very quickly from your undergraduate career uh, into the industrial sector. But it's not limited to that. You could also transition into research studies in graduate school, especially if you're interested uh, in a uh, experimental uh, area of physics, such as working uh, with the Large Hadron Collider or with uh, dark matter experiments that would benefit with you having uh, a more eye towards applying physics to experiment and things in the physical world. Um, this program has a possibility of doing a minor in business, especially if you're interested in moving into the industrial sector. And like all of our honors programs, includes a fourth year research project where you pair with a supervisor, one of the professors in our department, to carry out uh, some kind of research project in their research group. So. Um, that uh, depends on what you're interested in, uh, which professors you uh, discuss. There's a list of projects that are sort of uh, posted at the beginning uh, of each year, um, but also if you uh, have a particular professor you want to work with that you've discussed their research with them, you can always approach them uh, independently to ask if they would be willing to supervise you uh, in this uh, research project. Um, this ends up being kind of about the same uh, uh, amount as like a, a course load worth of, uh, of research uh, work. So you end up doing, you know, about eight hours of work uh, on that research project uh, per week. Uh, and then you will give a presentation at a symposium at the end of the, of the year, as well as write a uh, report uh, that will be given to uh, your supervisor. Uh, in this stream, uh, there are uh, courses that uh, are focused on electronics uh, in the laboratory and things like this and uh, applied physics applying uh, principles of modern physics, such as things like uh, uh, special relativity and quantum mechanics to um, uh, areas of, uh, of things that you can actually do in terms of experiments and measurements. And of course, it's important to have a, a, a background in computational physics as well if you're planning on uh, moving ahead into a very applied space as a lot of uh, work and analysis is done via computation. Different than the applied physics stream is uh, the experimental physics, which is actually focused more on research studies for graduate school. Again, not being that you couldn't transition into industrial sectors, but it is more focused on experimental research. Uh, so either in graduate school uh, or working for sort of like something like a national lab, which often is something that you would do after a, a graduate education, either a master's or a PhD as well. Um, and this one has the option of a co-op pro co program, which we'll discuss a little bit more um, uh, in a little bit, but basically you uh, expand your degree by about a year and then have some terms where you're not taking courses, but you instead do a work placement uh, with a, a company or a research lab. Um, again, like all of our honors programs, this has a fourth year research project. And uh, one of the things that this uh, stream includes that is not included in all the other streams is um, some advanced programming and then statistical mechanics and thermodynamics, meaning that you will have a uh, a more complete picture of uh, the sort of 
uh, physics as we have come to uh, in the, the modern day and how to apply that in uh, computational uh, modeling and things like this that you would be able to do uh, for an experimental physics program. Uh, as a side note, I am an experimental physicist, um, so this is uh, um, the, the space that I enjoy the most. There is uh, uh, not a completely uh, orthogonal to, but uh, sort of alongside the experimental stream, there is a theoretical physics stream where this is, uh, uh, you know, focused again more towards on uh, research furthering, further research with a theoretical interest. Uh, also has a co-op uh, uh, option as well as a fourth year research project, but focuses a lot more on uh, mathematical methods and numerical analysis of physics, where you will be using uh, more of uh, uh, just uh, conceptualizing uh, new descriptions of, of physics, coming up with uh, new models, new explanations for experimental data that has been found, and then interacting with experimentalists to carry out those two very important pieces of the scientific method, hypothesis and experiment, and as they feed back into each other. Those two pieces uh, are how we progress basic science uh, as physicists. A new program uh, for the last, uh, oh man, I guess it's it's five years now, so maybe less new than, <laughs> than when uh, uh, we had first uh, uh, thought about it. Um, but we also offer an astrophysics stream where this is uh, geared towards students that want to um, uh, further their studies in, in research with a focus on uh, astrophysics, which uh, is not something that we um, really specialize in here at Carleton, uh, but the astrophysical uh, space actually connects very closely with the particle physics uh, disciplines that we do focus on here. A lot of uh, astrophysical measurements are uh, complementary to particle physics measurements in terms of exploring basic science, and both of them uh, are uh, important to set limits on what kinds of models uh, would and wouldn't be allowed uh, to exist in the universe as we know it. Uh, so even though uh, we don't necessarily pro participate in uh, satellite experiments like uh, uh, the James Webb St Space Telescope, like you probably have heard of a lot in, in the news recently. Um, we are uh, complementary to those sorts of things, and as such, fi find it important uh, to offer that for our students. So if you want to continue on in graduate school uh, with an astrophysics uh, uh, focus, uh, you're prepared to do that. This, these courses, uh, you would focus on having some astronomy, phys astronomy uh, uh, courses with labs, um, cosmology, which is the study of the early universe and the universe on a, on a large scale, uh, as well as uh, focusing on astrophysical processes like star formation and uh, galactic uh, movements and things like this. It's a very exciting uh, new program we have here at Carlton. Also one of our most popular. Outside of the honors physics, there is the just the bachelor's in physics program that provides uh, sort of a more fundamental education and a wider breadth of topics. You have actually a lot of freedom to choose um, specialist topics in your upper year courses uh, to what you want to tailor your your degree to be is where with the honors uh, programs you have a much more narrow stream of uh, like define it, these are the courses you have to take. It also has enough space in your course program to allow you to minor in another discipline. In the honors uh, programs, uh, adding a minor onto it increases the course load over a critical threshold that makes the, the uh, a degree program quite difficult. Not impossible, but uh, we generally recommend that uh, if you wanted to do a minor with an honors program, uh, you have a, a, a consultation with our undergraduate coordinators and with the um, uh, faculty that you want or the department you want to do a minor in uh, and make sure that it's not going to overwhelm your, your course load as we want you to be successful in, in competing your degree. But with the bachelor's in physics, um, that freedom is a little bit more there. So you will not gain as much specialization. There's not a fourth year research project, but you have a lot more freedom to choose uh, pieces of your degree that you would like to put together uh, to form your bachelor's degree. Um, the way that our course structure is for all of these uh, uh, programs is actually that your first two years uh, are the same, no matter what program you choose. And then after that, there are still a lot of similar courses, but there are ones that you can branch out in and choose uh, some different courses. So for the first year, uh, no matter what program you choose in our department, uh, you will be taking a calculus-based classical mechanics and electrodynamics course for the first and second semesters of your first year. I have taught the uh, classical mechanics course for the past couple of years, and it's uh, very fun and interesting to see new students coming in uh, excited for their education um, and uh, moving on from there. So as I mentioned, it is calculus-based, and that means that if you are going to be uh, per, uh, 
pursuing this course, uh, a good understanding of calculus is important before you come into this. So uh, you don't have you don't have to have a perfect understanding of it. You'll be taking calculus in your math courses at the same time, but it is definitely something that uh, you need to at least have a passing understanding of what calculus is in order to uh, not be uh, kind of swamped by that material in the first year. Second year, you'll move into uh, some uh, physics that is a little more contemporary with our time. I say a little bit more as in, um, you know, earlier or uh, later than the, uh, uh, the, the Middle Ages or, or kind of the Renaissance area, moving into thermodynamics and electromagnetism, <laughs> excuse me, as well as modern physics, talking about things uh, like special relativity, as well as some sort of uh, pre-quantum behavior, some experiments that weren't quite able to be uh, described by classical mechanics, things like how uh, the atom uh, works and uh, behaviors that we see in terms of like what light is and how it uh, how it uh, interacts with materials and optics. Third year, uh, you start getting into more sort of physics of the, the 20th century, quantum mechanics, uh, advanced dynamics, mathematical physics, such like this, and, and starting into a more advanced laboratory section where you will be doing labs that are a little bit more focused on like what are uh, interesting physical phenomena that connect with uh, some uh, research areas uh, as well. In your fourth year, you'll get into sort of the more advanced topics of, uh, of physics, like particle physics, nuclear physics, uh, solid state physics being physics of materials, things like semiconductors, transistors, uh, how computers work on an atomic level, cosmology, uh, statistical mechanics, and uh, things such as this, as well as the most advanced labs where you will have the option to do things like uh, measure cosmic ray muons uh, falling on the Earth from outer space and try to measure their energy spectrum and uh, things about uh, uh, about uh, how they interact with materials. Um, so some very uh, interesting and advanced uh, laboratories that you're doing in your fourth year. And those, as I mentioned, those uh, labs have uh, uh, not just the, the muon lifetime, but there's also ones on sonoluminescence, things like uh, making light from sound waves and materials, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance, superconductivity, holography, things such as this um, uh, in the advanced labs that not only are uh, very fun for students, but actually are sort of one of the most things for us as instructors to do these sort of like really cool experiments with uh, interesting apparatus and, uh, uh, you know, get to demonstrate to students. Um, you know, what is uh, some of the more interesting results that you can see in a laboratory and get them excited for uh, the next stage in their lives or, or their education as a physicist. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we also have um, opportunities for during the summer terms for undergraduates to be able to participate in uh, research studies. So there is a uh, NSERC, the, the funding body uh, that we work under in physics, often will allow, will provide uh, some money for the, through application process for students to participate in an undergraduate summer research um, internship. And uh, we uh, take on a fair number of summer students each year, uh, both through the that program and through something called the Dean Summer Research Internship for, for lower year students. Some examples of ones that have happened recently is uh, we've had students that have been studying uh, the Higgs boson with the Atlas detector, looking at particular um, uh, decay channels of the Higgs boson with uh, data from the Large Hadron Collider, um, looking at uh, uh, neutron events inside of the Deep 3600 uh, um, detector, uh, as well as characterizing backgrounds from cosmic ray muons for that same uh, detector for, for dark matter search. We also um, uh, have had uh, students taking on theory projects, looking at unifying quantum chromodynamics, the standard standard model, uh, dark quantum chromodynamics, sorry, which is a, a possible dark matter uh, theory, looking for how that could mix with our understanding of the universe as we as it stands uh, now, uh, simulating uh, and simulating the ionization um, of uh, uh, charged particles as they progress through liquid xenon, again, looking at how dark matter experiments might use liquid xenon to detect ionization. Um, and then also uh, in the medical physics area, I, I have to apologize, I focus a little on particle physics a lot because that's uh, my sort of field of expertise, but uh, looking at uh, upgrades uh, for custom built uh, Raman microscope, which is an interesting way of being able to look at uh, tissues using nonlinear optics. Additionally, we've been able to have uh, uh, students working on something called the CRYPT experiment, looking at muon uh, flux variations, uh, looking at barium tagging in the EXO experiment, looking at uh, mass spectroscopy simulations, and characterizing time differences in uh, detectors that are used on the Atlas STGCs. These detectors, uh, we were built here at Carleton and were deployed uh, at CERN uh, in uh, 2021. 
Uh, and so now we have to characterize and uh, calibrate them to figure out how, how they work properly when we start taking data at the LHC uh, this summer. Um, different couplings uh, for uh, the Higgs boson, constraints of, uh, of interactions with the charged weak current, tracking tumors in real time, looking at how um, uh, as the body breathes and shifts, how tumors move and shift for uh, uh, delivering uh, treatment doses with accuracy so you don't harm uh, healthy tissue, uh, x-ray scatter imaging, things like this, and femtosecond lasers applications uh, and mass spectroscopy. I mentioned a little while ago there was a co-op option for several of the degree programs and that this would cause uh, you to be able to take a five-year program instead of a four-year program, but you can see here um, that uh, everywhere uh, where you see a W on the bottom row of this table, um, this is where uh, you would be possibly having a work term where you would be working uh, in industry or in a research lab or something like this, gaining some other experiments uh, for your co-op. So you end up having a five-year program. Uh, this is the fall, winter, and summer terms you see here, F, W, and S. So your first co-op work term would be in the summer of your second year, and then your summer of your third year, and then throughout your fourth year, there are uh, possibility of having work terms anywhere in there, and you need to have three work terms. So two out of those four in your third and fourth years need to be work terms. Uh, if you want more information on that, you should uh, contact the co-op office. Uh, uh, it's easy to find either by following this, this uh, web uh, URL, or you can just uh, Google uh, Carlton Co-op and you'll be able to find it there. I'm sure there will be a lot more uh, options uh, available um, about that uh, here. Examples of some co-op placements are uh, we've had co-op students that uh, have been placed at the Canadian uh, Nuclear Laboratories, uh, CNL, um, which is uh, north of uh, Toronto a bit, um, at the National Research Council, looking at the Ionizing Radiation Standards Group. This is a very important part of what the, the duties of the National Research Council uh, carries out to make sure that everybody is safe from ionizing radiation um, uh, in, in out in, in Canada. Uh, defense Research and Development, um, Health Canada, uh, Triumph, the Canadian Space Agency, and then also commercial companies also are options for placing co-op students. And I'll actually say that right now I have a co-op student working in my laboratory, uh, working on building an external muon trigger for a particle test stand. So it's also possible that research groups can take on uh, co-op students as well. So um, the options are, are quite wide. It's actually uh, quite popular with a lot of our students to have this so that they have some uh, work experience when they finish their degree, particularly if they're not thinking about continuing on with graduate school. It makes the idea of uh, finding jobs at the end a little easier. And a lot of co-op students actually find their job uh, that they will take after their uh, their uh, bachelor's degree, like during their co-op placements. They have a co-op placement that goes really well. They, they, them and their uh, co-op supervisors uh, get along really well, and they kind of are ready to enter that uh, group or company uh, once uh, they finish their degree. We also have a lot of strong support for our students uh, at Carleton. Uh, for our courses, our, our instructors all have office hours. And it's also just uh, something to um, that bears mentioning that our instructors uh, in our department actually are all uh, heavily invested in education and teaching. We're not just here to do research and then have to do teaching on the side. Um, all of us uh, are, care a lot about uh, helping our students out. And so beyond just having office hours, um, if you need to discuss something with professors, almost all of them are willing to uh, have one-on-one -on -one conversations or, or make appointments outside of that time. And so um, come to your classes, come to your professors, uh, trying to not to think of us as, you know, these authority figures on high who are going to impart knowledge onto you, but, um, you know, collaborators that are here to uh, engage and help you learn about the, the natural world. That's what we're passionate about. We're passionate about um, what uh, interesting things are happening in the natural world and how to describe and characterize it. And we want to share that with you. And that's the purpose of your education here. We also have um, lab and tutorial sessions that are done with teaching assistants that are typically uh, graduate students. So students that have been through the courses that you've been through uh, recently and uh, uh, are learning uh, more advanced things themselves so they can share that with you. And we also have a physics drop-in center uh, that uh, operates uh, many sessions weekly uh, offering one-on-one -on -one assistance uh, with uh, people who have taken the courses recently, either upper year students or uh, instructors that are participating in this drop-in center. So uh, there are lots of uh, resources that if you're struggling or you just want to learn a little bit more uh, about uh, physics, you can use these resources uh, to, to do that. Um, 
For study plans towards your degree, we also have uh, an undergraduate advisor who is Dr. Kevin Graham uh, at the moment and an undergraduate administrator, uh, Joanne Martin, whose job it is to be there to help you organize your program, make sure that you're taking the courses that you need to do in order to progress it, fulfill all your prerequisites, things such as this, and answer any questions about how you will uh, progress through your degree as time goes on. And then, of course, there's the undergraduate hand handbook, uh, which is sort of your uh, survival guide for uh, any uh, degree program uh, at Carleton. So now you know you're interested in physics, you're super hyped, you're like, oh, great, I'm going to go on, I'm going to take advanced dynamics, and I'm interested in particle physics or medical physics, I'm just so psyched. What do I need to make sure that I need to do in order to set up from my grade 11 and grade 12 uh, in order to make sure that I'm ready to join uh, Carleton uh, when you when you are uh, accepted? Uh, and uh, it's important that uh, to remember that a lot of the uh, uh, courses that I'm going to talk about right now, we talk about in terms of the Ontario school district standards. Um, but depending on where you're coming from, those may change. So you should make sure you are thinking about uh, what the equivalence to these things would be. So um, it's uh, important that uh, advanced functions are required for all of our degree programs. You need to make sure that uh, that you have that basic uh, understanding of math for coming into physics. And this is because math is like the language that we use to describe the natural world in physics. And if we uh, are having trouble speaking the same language between your instructors uh, and you, the students, uh, then it will be very difficult to properly uh, help you learn about uh, what is going on uh, in the natural world. Um, calculus and vectors is required for the honors programs, uh, but is uh, not required for uh, either the combined programs with bio and chem or for the majors programs, but it is highly, highly recommended. I would strongly recommend that you uh, take uh, calculus in high school uh, if you can. Uh, for the honors programs, you need to have um, at least one of the, uh, the grade 12 sciences. Um, but physics is, of course, strongly recommended if you're planning on joining a, a physics degree uh, in uh, university. Um, and uh, of course, the more of those science courses you have uh, taken, uh, the more interesting connections you will be able to find between physics and other scientists, uh, sciences. And um, for the other programs, you need at least two uh, from those uh, those above lists, uh, but of course, always physics is strongly recommended if you're going to be entering into physics. You need to at least have some idea of what you're getting into. I like to say that teaching physics and <laughs> excuse me, learning physics is kind of like uh, reading a story. Uh, the first time you read a story, uh, you get the kind of uh, broad strokes. Uh, you know, kind of the beats of the story. Oh, you know, the person does this, and then there's this happens. There's a conflict, and it gets resolved this way. But you often kind of miss out on some of the details. The second time you go around you uh, start to pick up more of the details. You start to understand the motivations and uh, you know exactly what's happening. And then the third time, you really have a deep understanding of it. The first time you're having the story, reading the story is like when you're doing it in high school. You're getting the general idea of how physics is going to progress, how, what the important things are, how you're going to uh, uh, you know, progress through your learning. And then when you come to university, it's that second time where you start to fill in the details. You're not looking at the broad strokes. The third time is actually if you want to progress to teaching physics, you have to like have that deep understanding in order to be able to tell the story back to someone else and have them gain the same thing out of it uh, that you did. So come prepared uh, for your second reading of the natural world story uh, in your physics degree, and you will do fantastic. That's our description of our program here today. Um, and um, we have some time uh, for questions. Um, is there any, we have, I think we have about 15 minutes, so I can answer uh, uh, questions about uh, anything about our program if there are any. Um, okay, so it looks like there's a few in the Q&A. Um, uh, the, the calendar was, uh, is uh, in, in the Q&A, there's the link for the calendar if you want uh, more information about the courses uh, specifically. Um, and, uh, this session is focused on undergraduate programs. Uh, if you're interested in uh, graduate programs, uh, there is uh, a contacts on our department website for, um, uh, for graduate admissions. Uh, you can contact the graduate coordinator and things like that if you're interested. Does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, feel free to uh, type them in the chat, uh, jump in as you need to. We have a little bit of extra open time here.
Okay. Well, uh, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed hearing about our department uh, today. If you want to have uh, uh, questions, if you have other questions, uh, we, we have a uh, booth in the uh, uh, this AirMeet uh, structure. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Professor Gornia, will be there to uh, uh, man the booth. Feel free to pass by and ask any more detailed questions about um, uh, our program or uh, interesting research things uh, such as that. Uh, I think there are also some uh, uh, lab tours uh, that are going to be happening next week. Um, uh, and uh, maybe some of you will be available to come to that. Um, otherwise, if you have uh, more questions about our program, feel free to get in contact with our undergraduate uh, administration team, Professor Graham uh, or uh, Joanne. Uh, their contacts are also on our department website, which is uh, linked in the chat. Um, and uh, I hope to uh, see some of you uh, in our program uh, in future years. So thank you for joining today. And um, I guess that's it for our, our session today. So thanks for joining.